Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. This is the market update. Which market update? The only one you can trust on YouTube. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com, a research leader in crypto, where we have our customers snug as a bug in a rug out of harm's way. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you've been listening to the wrong people, Subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. And if the content works out for you, please drop a like. We're looking to break a record. We're looking to get to 2,000 likes. Everybody who's been smashing that like button, we appreciate you. Okay, today we have an abbreviated stream, right? Now, obviously, for people who watch the stream, I'm making a point with the red shirt and the red hat, okay? I haven't busted out with the red shirt and the red hat since ETH was at like 1800, okay? So this is the pay attention outfit, right? Now let's welcome everybody who's on the stream. We have Soli Soul is here, Ali from London, welcome, right? We have Ontario, GF, we have Poland is here, Kentucky in the house, North Carolina, South Dakota is here, Denmark. SKT, appreciate the love. We have Dana from Jersey. Jersey in the house. Okay, London, UK. India up late at night. Leeds, in Leeds, England, as always. Father's Day love from Oklahoma. Appreciate that. Guatemala is here, right? We have Cameroon, right? Who's out of the way of the bear market. Chesapeake, Maryland, Michigan. Welcome. Okay, we have Mexico. Stuck in D.C. traffic, California, Paris is here, right? Ronak says red means danger. Yes, it is. Hot in Phoenix, Arizona, New York, Boston, South Africa, the Middle East, right? Vancouver, Canada, South Africa. Okay. Now, with everybody here, we're going to jump into a whole new, abbreviated, almost freestyle market update. Okay, so let's begin with news and information, all right? So we're going to do the news and information you know about. We're going to tell you what it means, right? That's the deer in the headlights phenomenon. And then we're going to tell you about the next round of news. We're going to play the who's going to blow up next game. Don't go anywhere. Crypto market recap. Swiss, Swiss luxury watchmaker introduces NFT-enabled smartwatch, okay? A use of NFTs. NFTs will be fidgetal, right? Meaning there'll be a digital and a physical thing attached to it. Fashion will lead the way. I met the first crypto supermodel, okay, in Los Angeles at NFTLA. So it was a, she was wearing a jacket that gets bought into Centraland, right? Then they ship you the physical jacket. The jacket has a QR code on it that tells you all about the artist. Most of the money goes to the artist and a little bit goes to the people who run the Decentraland shop, cutting out the Gucci's and the fashion designers of the world. Okay. Watchmakers are going to get hip to this. And eventually Gucci and all these companies are going to have DAOs where they don't tell you what styles they're putting out. You will tell them. And then everything will have a digital and physical component or fidgetal. Texas securities regulator investigates Celsius over withdrawal suspension. Well, I live in Texas and let me tell you this. In Texas, you don't want to meet the law. You don't, right? SEC commissioner Hester Pierce expresses, expresses strong support for crypto spot ETF and a regulatory structure. 
Very interesting comment, right? We will go more into the crypto spot ETF game. Believe it or not, I think Hester is probably trying to save the market from another huge heave if the spot ETF is, design, is declined. More on that in a minute. NFT platforms in China grow 5X in four months, four months, despite government warnings. Let me say that again. NFT platforms in China grow 5X in four months, despite government warnings, right? They have Macau, right, in Asia. You know, certain communities in Asia, they never met any gambling that they didn't love. And crypto, unbelievably, there's always a pocket of idiotic speculation in crypto. It's not that they don't love crypto, just that the second you see idiotic speculation, right, especially in the middle of a downtrend, right, like at the top of this move was ApeCoin, right? I need to pay 20 for ApeCoin. Now it's at six. Now you've got the Chinese speculating in NFTs and sell and get out. You have people trying to get in, <laughs> right? There's, there's always, there's always a bull market somewhere. And now there's always someone who's not listening somewhere. I'm trying to reduce the number of people who are not listening. Okay. Now we're going to go, we're, we're, we're going to do this like total freestyle. So this is market update freestyle. All right. Now, what's the most important chart in the market? Okay. The most important chart in the market, in my opinion, is Tesla. Tesla is the flagship growth stock. Elon Musk is the most popular person on the planet, right? Kathy Wood at ARK Investments owns tons of this. If Tesla goes down, Tesla owns Bitcoin. So if Tesla goes down, then basically all risk assets go down. Now, just as a reminder, right? Mr. Musk is getting sued. So is all his subsidiaries for men behaving badly in Dogecoin. Matter of fact, my understanding is that his own people at SpaceX are mad because every time this guy takes to Twitter, it's a distraction from their business operations. And this guy holds Bitcoin. So yeah, everyone's talking three hours capital. Everyone's talking Celsius. We don't want to talk. We do want to talk about what has happened. But most importantly on the market update, we want to start talking about what is going to happen. Okay. When you go back to Tesla, right? Even if the equity market tries to do better, which of course it will, because that's just what the equity market does, right? When in doubt, go up. Okay. The alligator moving average in Tesla is starting to spread out on the four hour chart. Okay. And there's resistance at 677. So if Tesla tries to go up and doesn't get above 677, not only do I think equities are going to K, but I think that's going to be the 1929 moment in crypto. Hence, all the red with the hat, etc. Now let's go through what you already know. Crypto hedge fund, three hours capital, considers asset sales and a bailout. Okay. And firm founders say that they still believe in the future of cryptocurrencies. Okay. Just what we need. Advice about the future of crypto from a bunch of irresponsible, arrogant hedge fund imbeciles that are going to blow up the whole space. The person you need to hear about the future of crypto from, not to be arrogant, is me and Token Metrics. Me and my colleagues at Token Metrics. We believe in the future of crypto and we can actually tell you something useful about it rather than this guy from Three Hours Capital who's just bullshitting his way, hoping no one notices how big the catastrophe really is. Now, frequently, okay, like I said, this is an interesting term, bailout. I'm kind of wondering who's going to do that. A commercial bank? The crypto Fed? Oh, wait, there is no crypto Fed, right? There was all this talk about bailouts, right? And then when there was no bailout, that was Lehman Brothers in 2008. It actually took people a while to figure out what this really meant, right? Like what, when firm A failed, right? What happened to firm B? There is no too big to fail. 
there were companies in 2008 that the government was just like, okay, this, this company AIG is too big to fail. There is no too big to fail in crypto. Or if there is, it's more like, you know, if it fails, the market has to completely reprice itself. And I've talked about this and you know about this, but what you don't know is that frequently trades like this can take a while to set in. Like there's all this news that like such and such person has been liquidated, right? Like three hours capital positions liquidated by FTX. Okay. So people think that it might be over, right? People are like, oh, it's over, right? Wrong. Wrong. BlockFi will undergo a liquidity crisis by the end of the year. BlockFi has already lost substantial amount of monies, 101% certain. Okay. And then there's this whole thread, right? As to, you know, why BlockFi is in trouble, right? BlockFi is making stupid bets in the market, according to this Twitter thread. And the SEC is already after them. So, okay. Yeah. BlockFi will undergo a liquidity crisis by the end of 2022. Do you think with the shark swimming around and there's already blood in the water from Celsius and three arrows capital that the market isn't going to just price in these guys blowing up. Now, speaking of blowing up, let's talk about the blow up that you don't know about, or no one is talking about. This article is from May. Okay. This is CNBC grayscale, right? who has a product called the trust that trades in the stock market. So people who are too afraid to do crypto, they've basically done two things, three things, right? Four things. First, they bought GBTC. I'll show you the chart in a minute. That's a trust of a company, Grayscale, that holds Bitcoin, right? Then they have MicroStrategy, Coinbase, and the Bitcoin ETF. Now this trust is not an ETF, right? So that means the way it works is, you know, if people keep selling this GBTC stock, right? Or GBCT trust in the stock market, either way you think about it, it's a stock, right? They can crush the trust way below the price of Bitcoin. Like the value of the stock is actually below, right? The value of the trust is below the physical Bitcoin that they hold. Now you're like, Wait a minute. Are you saying so many people are selling this thing that, you know, people are almost like saying, oh yeah, Bitcoin is, should be 30% lower, or I got to get out of this and I can't stop selling it. Right? So Bitcoin players in the equity market are doing GTFO. Again, don't go anywhere for the chart, but what Gase Grayscale is trying to do is they're trying to say, we need to turn right? Our trust, okay, into an ETF, right? That way there won't be this big disparity between where their Bitcoin holdings are and where GBTC is trading. Okay. Grayscale says the SEC is discriminating against issuers by approving a Bitcoin futures ETF and denying spot Bitcoin ETFs, according to the investment firm, back in May before this implosion starts. Now here's the, here's the big number. The deadline for the SEC to reject Grayscale's application is July 6th. With an equities blow up, usually in my opinion, due to start on July 5th. So let's think about this. Grayscale wants to be the first spot Bitcoin ETS, ETF. Hester Pierce, crypto mom is like, Hey, we should do this. The market is blowing up. They probably weren't going to do this when the market wasn't, wasn't blowing up. Now there's no effing way they're going to do it. Just no way. Now, why is this the next story? Well, let's take a look. Here's the chart of GBTC on a monthly basis. Currently GBTC is at 12. The next support is nine, which is, you know, far away in percentage terms. More importantly, 
GBTC is now back to where it was in October of 2020. So the equity market is like, oh, we are getting out of this. We're done. We are not going to be long this sludge anymore. People can hold this stuff in like IRAs, retirement accounts. They were going to be long-term hodlers. Does this look like anybody's doing long-term hodling in GBTC? And again, I, I can poke fun at this a little more because it's equity market players, right? Now, if we go to Bitcoin, actual Bitcoin, okay? We go back to October of 2020, Bitcoin was at 10K. 10K. So Bitcoin in the stock market crushed back to its 2020 levels and still not at support, right? The support is at July 2020 lows. The July 2020 lows in Bitcoin is, is 9K. So what happens with the SEC? What happens when the SEC tells these guys to go get bent on July 6th, right? Everybody's going to unload GBTC. I mean, they already have. They've crushed it. But this is a source of more Bitcoin selling. Why? Well, because our friend Kathy Wood from ARK. Remember ARK? The innovative hot tech stocks that don't have earnings. Like Kathy Wood looked like a genius for putting in her ETFs. And then all of a sudden, those ETFs crashed back to where they were before the pandemic. So check this out. This is Kathy Wood's holdings of the of GBTC. Now they bought a bunch of GBTC back in July, right? And May of 2021. Now, as it dropped last year, they kept buying more. Now GBTC holdings have gone down somewhat, but you know. It's, it's not like they've fallen out of bed the way Bitcoin's fallen out of bed. Now get this, check this out. Now I'm going to try to blow this up as much as I can. So here's how GBTC works. Let's say you were a huge player like Kathy Woods. You don't want to go into the open market and buy a million shares of GBTC. You're going to go to Grayscale directly and say, hey, guys, I'd like to buy some GBTC. How about, you know, you issue me a million shares and then you guys go buy the Bitcoin and figure that out. And Grayscale's like, yeah, no problem. We'll do that. This is one catch. Okay. You're locked up for either six months or a year. Okay. So the last time GBTC allowed people to do this was like something like July 21st, something, somewhere in there. Okay, and look at Kathy Wood. On June 22nd, right, she bought 1 million shares, right? It's almost one half of 1% of her stock fund. Okay, it's not a lot, but still, she bought 1 million shares, and it's a guess, but my guess is, is that she can unload that on June 22nd, or that's possible. We're checking the numbers. But we also know that there's another point in July where people can unload stuff that they bought in July of last year at the lows. Because again, she was very active, you know, not as active, but she bought more on the 19th of July and she bought more on the 20th. So sometime in the next 30 days, there are people that own this equity market version of Bitcoin who can unload. And if the SEC doesn't approve the spot ETF, which after Luna and all these calamities, I can't imagine why they would do that. These people like Kathy Wood can start selling Bitcoin. Okay. So it's like, okay, yeah. Three arrows, Celsius, you know, sailor. No one's talking about Musk and Kathy Wood. Nobody, of course, token metrics, right? Because we're trying to give you what's next. Okay. So here's the article from November of 2021. Okay. Where ARC, you know, right around 29,200. Okay. Uh, ARC bought more Bitcoin. Okay. So they bought more Bitcoin. Okay. 
and they bought like 450,000 shares. Okay, so they've bought around 420 Bitcoin in July of last year. Okay, and that's $13 million. Now, I don't know, that's not what Michael Saylor owns, but nobody is accounting for what happens, right? If these people in the equity market, not just Kathy Wood, but retail capitulates and says, I'm out, I'm done. Revulsion in Bitcoin. Okay, something that people need to think about. Kathy Wood bought the dip. ARK Investment buys 1 million BTC. Okay, that was in June of this year. Okay. So they not only aren't selling yet, they bought more and the fund has got 8 million shares of this GBTC product. Okay. Which as we've noted, is completely falling out of bed. Right. This smells like another person who can liquidate. Now, Speaking of the future of crypto and why crypto matters. Okay. This is important. So I want to mix in. I want to distinguish between who tells you where crypto prices should go, how you should preserve your capital while also talking to you about the future of crypto. So the gentleman who formed WikiLeaks can be extradited from the UK to the US to face criminal charges, no doubt as a distraction from all the things that are wrong in America, right? So this guy exposed the US government, maybe leaked classified material. He's sick, he's been kept in jail. The guy basically has no rights. This is a demonstration of one simple fact. If you piss off a government and you do something that they don't like, even if you think you're doing the right thing, they can come down on you so hard that they can just wreck your life. Now, I can appreciate the need for national security, okay? But I can also appreciate that this guy thought he was doing the right thing by exercising freedom of the press. And when you're on the wrong side of a government, you're on the wrong side of life. And crypto is designed to give people freedom. So we don't want to hear the bullshit crypto lollipop sunshine up your ass pitch from three arrows. We want to hear it from researchers who are telling you and reminding you that crypto is about sovereignty and freedom. And whether this guy did something wrong or not, whether this guy is going to go to jail or not, it's an example of how your personal sovereignty and freedom can be achieved through crypto, which is why we want to get you out of the way and get you buying crypto at the right price. Okay. So that is market update news, not just what's happening, but what we think might happen. Now we're going to give you a extra special treat. Okay by sharing with you, okay, the research that we give our customers. So special treat for you today. This is called Token Metrics Navigator. It's something that I publish every Friday. So as I said at the beginning of the live stream, you know, whose work are you reading? Where are you getting your information these days in crypto? Well, hopefully from this YouTube channel, and if you want like AI and human research, it's token metrics. Because I don't like overshill on the stream, even though I'm a token metrics employee, I don't overshill because people don't like overshill. So instead of shilling, I'm just going to show you what we do. All right. An example. Now you'll recognize this. You've seen these charts before, but this is an important lesson here that I'm going to write about in this newsletter. So this is total crypto market cap weekly. 
And, you know, it's currently at 817 billion and there's support at 614 billion. Now, when this had a $2 trillion market cap, $200 billion was eh, whatever. But on a percentage basis, right? Total crypto market cap can go down another 25% before it hits support. And then guess what? What happens if it doesn't hold support? What happens to total crypto market cap at that point? So 25% down their support. That's kind of a lot. But what happens if that doesn't hold? Because remember, who's coming? Sale, Celsius, Kathy Wood, GBTC, right? And whoever else is blowing up out there. Because as with Lehman, as with 2008, we don't, we don't know what's out there. So 614 billion in total crypto market cap better hold. By the way, that goes back to December of 2020. So you will have unwound most of the pandemic rally if you go back to 614 billion, okay? And if that number does not hold, then we are gonna re-auction crypto and find a whole new price level. Now let's talk about navigation. 1041, we're identifying as the critical support level in ETH. If ETH gives out from 1041, we're showing 823 and 385 as possible targets. Okay, here, all right, for our customers, and especially one time only for you today, we mix the hidden pivot levels and the GAN work that I do to come up with support and resistance. So if it rallies, if ETH rallies, you know, if there's some sort of everything is all right trade, which can happen, right? 1170, 1220, and 1390 are the resistance levels. So if you're a short seller, these are levels to pay attention to if you're looking to get short on a rally. Now, if you're long or you prefer getting short after things break, we've got levels like 1060, 960, 823, and 770. Okay. So once you start breaking down in ETH, you really start breaking down. And this goes back to this peg between staked ETH and ETH, right? You deposit your ETH, they give you an IOU and they call it STE, right? The IOU for ETH and ETH should trade at the same price, basically. Well, what happens if men behaving badly and went out and did leverage things with it, like three arrows capital. What happens if that relationship goes through a disturbance period? The answer is no one knows. And that's what's toxic about it. No one knows. So everyone knows three arrows capital and Celsius are either blowing up or about to blow up, but nobody has any idea what the ramifications are on the market. Some people might say, well, they've already been liquidated. Maybe, but what if the contagion spreads out and there are other people who get liquidated or are insolvent or there's a run on the banks, All right? Bitcoin, 20,700 is a key level, okay? Uh, 20,000 is obvious support. And what I'll say about that is that's last chance liquidity, right? Retail, everyone's gonna buy at 20. It's irresistible. I don't blame them. I get it. It's irresistible, right? If you missed it last year, you're like, oh my God, I can get it at 20. It's never gone below the previous cycle high. So I'm going to bid there. Okay. Now what happens if somebody comes in and fills you? Okay. You got support at 19,400, 18,600, 16 and 14,200 is the ultimate destination of this formation somewhere in the 14s. Celsius's liquidation point, last I checked, was at 14. They can lower it to 10 and it could still go there. Okay. Not to mention what happens to sale. I mean, there's a lot of distance between 18 and 14. Okay. Now, of course, if Bitcoin holds 20, there could be a relief rally, which could mean 21,700, 22 and change, 
23 or 25. So our customers, like we'll give them this newsletter and they'll have it on their desk, right? So they're saying, all right, market went up, market went down. Where's the support? Where's the resistance in a quick, clean format where they can just get to it right away. And I'm pretty sure you can get access to something like this for like, I don't know, 20 bucks a month. It's like the basic subscription plus a research add-on. Okay, now let's go to macro. Okay, dollar index uh, is at 103. And, you know, the dollar went through this corrective period. I thought dollar yen might top. And what did it do? It just went straight back up again. Now that does help equities, but if the dollar index goes above, if it bounces off 103 and goes to 106, because we did this before, right? It bounced off 101 and then it went to 103. And if the dollar index goes through 106, it could go to 111. Now, if the dollar index breaks out like that, it could be because of a collapse in the euro. There's an orderly uptrend in the yen, right? But there could be a collapse in the euro because the euro is a huge component of the dollar index. Now, if you have a collapse in the euro, right? You're going to have problems throughout the financial system, right? Coinbase, okay? A revised chart outlook. We did our hidden pivot analysis differently, right? And we noticed that 72 acted as resistance. So given that fact, I redrew this analysis, right? And originally I thought 50 was support and it is. So 50 in Coinbase is the 20 in Bitcoin, in, in crypto stocks. But the alligator moving average is starting to spread out again in Coinbase. Just like it did in January when Coinbase was at 260. Just like it did in April when Coinbase was at 195. Just like it did in May when Coinbase was at 120. And if that alligator moving average come Monday morning, come terrible Tuesday, like red cap, red shirt, hello, right? Target is 11. The downside target in Coinbase is 11 unless it's above 72. And I don't see Coinbase rallying $22. I don't at all. And sometimes, okay, with RSI low and oversold, sometimes you can see the biggest crashes when RSI is oversold. So you might look at Bitcoin and be like, oh, Bitcoin's fine, right? It's holding 20. Yeah, but GBTC is crashing in equities right? Tesla has problems. They own Bitcoin. And this chart on Coinbase looks like the rally to 72 was the rally to sell. And the next stop is 11. The things that work best in TA and in research are stuff people can't see. I don't think people are saying Coinbase can go to 11. People might be saying, Hey, I don't know if I can get liquidity on Coinbase. I don't know if the exchange is going to be up, but what does the world look like with Coinbase at 11, right? No, my former employer, Goldman Sachs. So you think contagion, failures, margin calls is only for crypto, right? Wrong, wrong, right? Goldman Sachs, hidden pivot analysis, it broke below 295. The next support level is 229. Now in crypto, we don't think that that's a big deal, but that's 20% down in the best bank, best investment bank in the world. So if the best investment bank in the world goes down 20%, what's going to happen in S&P? Right? So let's go back to S&P or let's go back to stonks just quickly, right? Just quickly. Because yesterday I said, good riddance to web two. Fang, you know, see it, wouldn't want to be it, right? Wouldn't want to be it. Here is QQQ monthly, okay? And these are like GAN bands that I draw. And QQQ is supposed to be inside these bands. The last time it was inside the bands was all the way back here in 2008. So the only time QQQ spent any time inside these bands was way back when it started. 
And then QQQ went on this massive rampage, massive rampage, right? Like here's the pandemic starting in April, straight up, straight up. Now, everything is going to unwind its pandemic rally. Like ARC has done it. GBTC has done it. Bitcoin is going to do it down to 10. It's going to happen, right? QQQ right now is at 275. The pandemic rally started at 180. And get this, QQQ is now just coming back inside the band. Theoretically, it's supposed to be traveling it. How much room does Web2 have to go lower? Oh my God. And where is crypto going to be if that's what happens? Where is crypto going to be if that's what happens? Okay. So right now, just like, you know, again, just to drive the point home. Okay. ETH is just hanging out here at 1041. Okay. So let's sum up what we've learned. When it comes to the news, your imagination is now required. Okay. So it's not just about who's blowing up now, but it's who's blowing up and not get lulled into sleep, not get lulled to sleep by quiet price action. In my mind, quiet price action is the new rally. So if the market just sits, that's like a rally because it makes people afraid to be short. You're like, oh my God, ETH can go to 1280 or 1390 or whatever I had. Yeah, theoretically, yeah. So if you want to take the risk of catching the thing that matches the red shirt and the red hat, you have to sell the rally, but the rally is stability. And that's one of the tricks of bear markets. People go, oh, okay. Three hours capitals bankrupt, FTX liquidated them. That's it. That's it. It's over. Okay. I don't think so. It requires your imagination. It requires you to see that sideways is up and down is mega down. That's the new world we're living in. Now, if I'm wrong, there'll be a mega squeeze. I can acknowledge I could be wrong. But when you look at the news, you don't just look at what's happening now. You look at what's going to happen next. Tesla in the headline. Tesla stock in trouble. Kathy Wood's ARC funds already destroyed. GBTC. Bitcoin in the stock market, the original, the OG way for equity people to, to play crypto. Destroy, right? Distress, cracks in the system appear everywhere. And when you look at the guy who formed WikiLeaks, you want to be reminded of one simple thing. And this is the bottom line. Whether this thing goes up or whether it's terrible Tuesday next week, Last video talked about the 29 crash, right? How it started on a Thursday, right? Friday was bad. And then the ensuing Tuesday was the horror show. So I'm getting you ready for terrible Tuesday. And when terrible Tuesday comes, if it comes, you want to remember something. You want to remember the guy from WikiLeaks. Okay. The guy who spoke up, who spoke out, either broke the law or didn't break the law, regardless governments ruin this guy's life and his health. So crypto is about freedom. Crypto is about sovereignty. Crypto is about not being relying on governments for your money, for the integrity of your money. And you want to be able to remember that and act when terrible Tuesday and whatever ensues in July and even September comes along. Okay. You got to have capital to participate in the future. And if you listen to the wrong people and you get wrecked, whether it happens now or later, how can you participate in the future? Right. When you look at these guys getting carted off to jail, right. Or you, you look at the fact that the guys who formed all these hedge funds that blow up, right. You know, unless they get taken off to jail, they're going to be living just fine. Do you know in 2008, not one executive of one investment bank went to jail? Nobody. Matter of fact, they got golden parachute $50 million severance packages when they left.
because that's what was in their contract. So the little guy got destroyed and the clowns and the characters and the men behaving badly walked off with a bunch of money. Now, unfortunately, that's what's happening in the crypto space, but I got news for you. After they get done giving the crypto ecosystem an enema, the next round up won't be men behaving badly, not like this. In order to make it, you'll have to prove that you have integrity. So the future of crypto will have integrity, right? Or more integrity than it's got now, let's hope. But you gotta be there in order to participate. You gotta be out of the way of a, of a calamity, right? You gotta be out of the way of the invisible monster in order to be there when the time comes. So that's the market update for this week, right? For Friday, I will see you on Monday, right? 